Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips, which is brought to you by Wellness Forum Health and the Wellness Forum Institute for Health Studies. Everybody likes free stuff. I'm going to start with um, a couple of free things. First of all, we have a $995 boot camp. We're offering it free this year. First time ever we've done this. It's March 14, 15, 16, three hours each night. I have some wonderful guests lined up to talk to you. Um, some of our, our affiliates who are doing some really interesting things that you're gonna to wanna to hear about, tons of education, including the topic that we're gonna to talk today about. Um, opportunity for questions, um, really looking forward to this. So um, if you wanna do that, if you wanna register, just let me know with email. Uh, another thing, we offer free tours, and I, I usually do this two, three times a month for people who want to look at our libraries and resources and engage in an informal Q&A, general health Q&A with me. Uh, the next ones are scheduled for March 9th or March 13th, so I've got a daytime and an evening one, so feel free to email me and uh, let me know if you'd like to join one of those. And then our favorite veterinarian, Dr. Carol Gifford, is going to teach a class on dog and cat vaccines on May 4th. It's a two-part series, a morning and an afternoon session. We will record it. We try to record everything. We realize that no matter when we schedule stuff, not everybody can attend uh, real time, so we record everything. And last but not least, we're starting to get busy at our clinic. We have opened our first location. We have a nurse practitioner uh, here in central Ohio. So if you're an Ohio resident, it's worth it to even drive here from out of town to have the right kind of practitioner. All right, so um, I'll just start by saying during the last five years or so, I've created a lot of videos. I've written dozens of articles about vitamin D. I've pointed out a lot of things to people. It's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. The medical definition of vitamin, by the way, is a substance that cannot be produced by the body and therefore must be consumed in food. Vitamin D is not found in food and it's produced by the body. I've pointed out that studies, a few hundred of them, continue to show that vitamin D levels drop when a person is sick and rise again as the person recovers. In other words, the deficiency is caused by the illness. The lower D levels have nothing to do with the development of the illness and taking vitamin D won't prevent or help to resolve disease. Lower vitamin D levels are simply a marker for poor health and not a cause of it. And I've shown again and again that to perpetuate the vitamin D hoax, and that's what it is, and gen up demand, the reference ranges have to be changed and have been changed, ratcheted upward again and again, like so many other biomarkers regarding health. That's the new game in healthcare is you expand the audience of people who qualify for a particular thing, whether it's a vitamin or a drug, by changing the biomarkers that um, qualify the person to take whatever it is. I've made the point so many times that I decided several months ago to just stop talking about it, but it's hard to do this. I receive emails weekly from people asking me to reconsider my position. Most provide no evidence. Some will submit the same studies I've already reported on that show no benefit, which they obviously haven't read themselves or they wouldn't present them as evidence. And then there are the people who are all outright hostile as if facts are contrary that are contrary to somebody's belief system about something like vitamin D just can't be tolerated. And gosh, we've seen a lot of that lately, right? These are the people who essentially are saying to me, please don't try to confuse me with facts. My mind is made up about this issue. Cancel my subscription, you know? So I hate to see that type of thing because agree or disagree, refusing to listen is not the answer. In the meantime, more and more studies support my position on this vitamin D issue. So I feel compelled to report on them mainly because sooner or later, I think all branches of medicine are going to have to admit that there's no epidemic of vitamin D deficiency, that vitamin D is a hormone, not a vitamin. It's stored in the fat tissue while we're only measuring plasma levels. I'll come back to that in just a couple of minutes here. There are hundreds, hundreds of randomized controlled trials that prove my point. And here are the results of some that I may I have not talked about before. So first let's talk about vital a study of VITAL, a study that included over 25,000 people with five years of follow-up, and they compared vitamin D with placebo. No difference in the primary endpoints measured, which were cancer or cardiovascular disease. Rates of all-cause mortality were identical between the groups. In subgroup analysis, the effects were not related to vitamin D levels at baseline. In another study, over 21,000 adults were randomized to vitamin D or placebo, and there were no differences in overall mortality or cardiovascular mortality. 
studies that looked at the consequences of low vitamin D levels in people born with genetic mutations that predispose them to have low D levels uh, for life. These are referred to, by the way, as Mendelian randomized studies have shown that there are no consequences that can be attributed to lower vitamin D levels even when they persist over an, a person's entire lifespan. Over 60 studies of this type have found no relationship. And then there's this, a review of systematic reviews and meta-analyses concluded, quote, despite a few hundred systematic reviews and meta-analyses, highly convincing evidence of clear role of vitamin D does not exist for any outcome, but associations with a selection of outcomes are probable. And this is a very important point, which is the difference between association and a cause and effect relationship. Well, the spin on failed studies is what confuses people. For example, the authors of the VITAL trial, the first one that I talked about here, after finding no relationship between vitamin D and cancer or cardiovascular disease, performed a secondary analysis that looked at the incidence of metastatic and fatal invasive cancer. The conclusion, a 0.4% lower rate for patients taking vitamin D, a result that was barely statistically significant. Now, the fact that anyone would cite the secondary analysis shows how gullible even health professionals can be. It's well known that reanalyzing data with a different endpoint after the results of, study have, of a study have already been revealed produces garbage and noise that you would not use to make clinical decisions. In this case, the results aren't clinically significant and not statistically worth even reporting. But here's the thing, the study has been viewed 60,000 times and reported by dozens of news outlets. Now I can forgive the reporters, they don't know much about things like study design. They don't know a lot about reverse causation and other issues that I've mentioned in this um, discussion here, but the doctors who cite it, they should know better. The fact that they don't is why we're insisting that all health professionals who join our network and work in our clinics have to have been through our training program. And consumers who expect to eventually be covered by our reimbursement plan will need to be members of Wellness Forum and have been trained to think critically as well. Now, vitamin D supplements aren't particularly expensive, but the consequences of taking large doses of this hormone for long periods of time are not yet known, and they might be very expensive. This certainly was the case after the Women's Health Initiative showed that HRT for postmenopausal women increased the risk of both heart attack and breast cancer. And that uh, study was not done. It ended early, by the way, but it wasn't undertaken until women had been taking uh, hormone replacement therapy for decades. And, um, and so we tend to put the cart before the horse in healthcare where we jump off the cliff and do things and then think, well, maybe we ought to look into it. After we look into it, it's not such a great idea. Another thing that's concerning is the thinking process that leads to the recommendation to take vitamin D. It's concerning and people who engage in such a process are likely to arrive at other conclusions that might not lead to the best health, health outcomes as well. So as I mentioned, I, was, um, I had decided I wasn't gonna talk about vitamin D anymore because it had been beaten to death, but it is a topic that just doesn't go away. And so we have to, I feel like part of my role is to keep reminding people that um, there are a lot of opinions that are widely held in healthcare and a lot of ideas that are expensive and harmful and you know just routine part of healthcare that are not based on sound science or outcomes, good outcomes for patients. And it's why the patient needs to be well-educated and it's why providers who wanna be good at what they do need to be very open-minded and examine their beliefs about things, all of them, um, before, uh, before plowing ahead. So uh, this kind of brings me back to the beginning, which is where I announced our, our free boot camp. We're gonna talk about this and a whole lot of other issues that I think are interesting and concerning to everybody. We're gonna have nine hours to do it, three hours each night. So um, be, make sure you are bright-eyed, bushy-tailed with pen and paper in hand, ready to take notes for that event. Uh, we already have um, like 400 people registered. I'm so excited. I don't think we've ever done anything quite this large before, as large as this is going to be. So if the types of things I report on are interesting to you and you want to know more about them, join us for the free boot camp. And of course, 
send me an email at pampopper at msn.com if you'd like to join our free tour or inquire about health professional training or any of the other things that we have going on at Wellness Forum. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.